We're here at Click Connect 2025 in Orlando. I have the pleasure of being joined by Roberto Sigorna, who's the Chief Operating Officer at Click. Great to see you again. Thanks for making Thank time you. to catch up with me. Thank you for having me. Now, this time last year, we talked about uh, the overall topic of uh, the value of not overlooking simple implementations when getting started with AI in particular. How have things changed in the last year? Well, you know, funny enough, not as fast as I thought they would change. I think um, uh, there's a lot more energy around the topic, a lot more people trying. There's a lot of failures, though. Yeah. I, I think people are still trying to figure out why they're trying to do it. I hear a lot of people, I got to do AI, but they don't know how to go about it. Right. It's sort of like a bottoms-up initiative without starting with the, the, with the end in mind. So it's a little confusing. Uh, I see a lot of customers uh, trying, but not really getting anywhere right now. So they need more help than, uh, than they thought. Right, and, and Click is so well positioned for that, and we've seen that certainly here in the last couple of days uh, in Orlando at Click Connect 2025, both with the various uh, general sessions and particularly Mike's opening keynote um, that speaks directly to what you're just saying, which is, and I think often what we're hearing is, you know, pick one thing, do it really well, prove it's a success, and then rinse and repeat. That's right. I imagine that's what you're seeing sort of in your role both is, because I think one of the things I, I'm always inspired by you is that when I look at your CRO role, you, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you, you have to drive the function internally within your own company. That's right. And That's then you right. also have to drive it within your customers. That's right. Um, and so that gives you a very unique lens uh, from, from a vendor point of view as well as supporting your that, ecosystem. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. And are you seeing that now? I mean, you've got some very big announcements, very big exciting things come out, you know, whether it's Click Answers, whether it's your gener uh, agentic, agentic AI, et cetera. That's a tongue twister. Um, the the, the uh, cloud platforms, et cetera, the, the Click Talent Cloud, yeah. uh, uh, integration. Um, are you seeing that you've really just got to grab things and just solve a problem at once and move forward? Because I know Absolutely. you've got such a broad portfolio. Absolutely, and uh, you know, uh, I work hand in hand with uh, Drew on the data integration yep. and Brendan on the, on the AI and BI side. I'm the customer zero. Okay. Uh, okay I run IT at Click, so uh, you know, and I, it makes me a lot more credible both with the, with the product people and, give, and being able to give them early feedback on what works, what doesn't work, as well as when I go back to my customer to give them advice, well, I've done it myself. Right. So uh, trying to do what I preach, it is clear that uh, uh, we had some large acquisition talent and I had to do the integration of the technology, so I've used our own technology to just uh, and infuse AI in some of yeah. those processes to see and work out the king, so to speak. Uh, so, that, so that I can really practice, learn myself, make my team uh, adopt the technology as well so that I can also get, go outside and preach people about uh, what we've learned and how to go about it. Yeah, there's, there's nothing better than someone who's eating their own dog food, as they say here in that's America. Right. That's right. Um, and you do have, you know, I think that speaks directly to the sort of credibility you need to go out into the field with your partners and integrators, resellers, the training companies, because the first thing they're going to say was, how did you do it? Have you done it? And you can actually say, yes, we've, we have done that. And show them, yeah. Um, with some, with, there's a number of big challenges going on around the world at the moment. I mean, you know, we won't go into the detail of what they are. Um, when we think about the adoption of sort of quote unquote AI, whether it's generative um, AI or whether it's uh, machine learning and so forth. What are some of the big trends you've seen over the last year outside of your organization that you've been able to help companies with? Yeah, so I think that what's happening in the world right now, mainly with the tariffs, is creating a lot of confusion. Yeah. So people have budget, they don't have budget, they have budget again. <laughs> so there is a lot of, uh, so what people have the need to do, even more so than before, is show return on investment faster. Because right. those windows get shorter, things are kind of hectic. So yep. when you have an idea, the time customers have to demonstrate that the, the idea can just do something right. is shorter. So this concept you were talking about, there's that uh, you really got to pick one thing and make it work. So it's, it's sort of like a bit more of a show and tell game now. Right. Look, it does work. And then you really get the budget to go and do it at scale afterwards maybe. So the big projects bottom up creating big teams spend millions of dollars, do a lot of like requirements gathering for months. That's kind of done. It's, uh, I would say, a lot more agile now, uh, skunk yeah. work. What I like to talk about in, even at Click internally is uh, while the organization is a super tanker uh, going in its own direction and uh, steady, when I want to do something new like AI, you got to put, put a few people off the super tanker on a speedboat. Right. And, uh, you know, again, preaching what, uh, uh, that, yeah. what I tell my customers, I create my own little AI team. 
Okay. You know, out of an organization in IT, which is like two to three hundred, my overall team, uh, close to a thousand people, I could an AI team of eight people. Right. We, we are free to go wild. Uh, and, uh, but, but again, go wide on a specific point problem okay. with a short sprints to demonstrate that it works. Yep. So find interesting challenges, get some wins with it, set up a version 1.0 and move forward. And, and I imagine you can, if you're doing that internally within your own organization and within Click, you can then take those learnings out to your very broad custom base and saying, here's how we've solved this problem, we think That's we right. can help you with it, here are the tools that Click can bring to the that, table. That is right. And AI, AI has all these negative connotations, like it's taking my job away. Right. Okay, they spoke, uh, James spoke about that on stage. It will take some jobs away, or it will take your job away if you're not getting ready for it. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So, the biggest challenge, at least I see within Click sometimes, with my own team, but even more so with customers, is this uh, resistance to change. So again, this concept of doing it small with a few people who are convinced, uh, people will be sarcastic at the beginning a bit. I'm not sure this is going to work. Yep. This is not how it works. This is too complicated. AI, Gen AI cannot do this. ML cannot solve that problem. When you do fix the problem, obviously then uh, it's a success. People start talking about the success and people like success and want to be part of it. Absolutely. Yep. And then uh, you get like the people resistance aspect of things uh, out of the way, which is actually the biggest problem we have, I think, more than even the tariffs and the, and the world we live in. Okay. I think internally, people thinking, you know, every single big shift in technology, when the internet came, people said, I want nothing to do with it. Yeah. I, yeah. Remember, I remember even when I was a kid, when the ATM machine came, my mom telling me she would never use it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So how funny that looks today. I think my mom said something similar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Uh, actually, it's an interesting point you raised. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I constantly, in the back of my mind, I had this one liner that Mike Capone said yesterday on stage, which is, AI is not going to take your job. It's somebody who's better than you at, at AI will take that's your right, job. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Which I think is important. And I think that uh, is, is going to apply to organizations as well, and that is that if your competitors become better with AI, they're going to get a competitive They're going to leap forward, yeah. <laughs> um, with that in mind, is there a particular type of company that's excelling with the adoption of AI that you're seeing? Any uh, industry or any uh, player? I'm not sure there is a, really an industry where I see that done. I'm surprised <laughs> about, um, uh, for example, um, industries I would never never have thought they were so high tech, but for example, power generation. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of examples I, I, I've seen recently where obviously it, that world is changing. They used to use coal and oil, and now they have like uh, you know solar energy and windmills, and uh, they <coughs> became me. brokers of buying and selling energies based yep. on demand. And uh, you can turn off solar or on and off whenever yeah, you yeah. feel like it. So it has become an interesting game now of uh, uh, using AI to predict demand based on weather forecast and uh, yep. and trying to just turn on and off production and selling and so. There, I've seen models of AI that they do, which I'm like, wow, very impressive. And uh, maybe out of necessity, they had to reinvent themselves because they were under threat. Yeah. So uh, maybe there was, there was a more burning platform. So that's for an industry I thought was interesting. But in general, where I think, where I see success is when it's not an IT project. Okay. Uh, uh, because uh, IT, it's not like a, uh, you know, I create something and people should come to use it. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to, I have a real business need, and I do realize that I have to do find a new answer to an old problem. So the successes I see when the problem, problems to be solved are very specific, and there is a real strong handshake between the business user yeah. and, uh, uh, and the IT piece. Unlike the opposite is, again, IT doing the whole data piece, uh, maybe very well, and I say like, well, and here's the tool to go do AI on it. People don't even know what the art of the possible is. Right. Yep. So uh, yep. people get confused about that. The, the opposite where people fail, Mike Capone uh, and Drew talked about that on, uh, on main stage yesterday, is when people want to skip to the end without doing all the necessary preparation right. work. Right, yeah. We talk about click answers. There's nothing worse than just putting all your structured and unstructured data into the engine and giving junk data. Yep. Okay, so people who have not curated and took care and uh, they did the, the data for, uh, for a long time, they're in a world of hurt. Yeah, yeah, I remember Mike Capone saying that on stage last year, garbage in, garbage out, right? That's right. Uh, well, no. It's now hallucination out. Yeah, the hallucination out. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always, I look at that phrase and like, yeah, hallucination. 
Uh, with that in mind, uh, you know, when we talk about some of the organizations that are succeeding at it, are there industries or organizations that are maybe falling behind a little bit where the adoption of AI isn't quite as rapid as, as you might have hoped? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I, I don't see industries. I see that I live in Europe, for example, we tend to be slower in technology adoption, but I think there is a sense of panic even at the government level now right. that they need to wake up, the post office, everybody is trying to think what yep. it means. As I said, uh, I'm not sure they're falling behind or not falling behind. I think uh, it's a bit of chaos right now. Right. Everybody knows they need to do something about it. It's not always uh, organized chaos yet. But uh, they are, uh, the interesting thing is I see in places you would not think about, this, they're, they're starting about creating those new roles, hiring early in career people who think differently. Because yeah. uh, that's kind of a generational thing here we're dealing right. with. Yeah. So I think the people who would, uh, who would uh, fall a bit behind are the people who are more monolithic and, and uh, have a tendency of not liking change yeah. in general. Yeah. So, so I think, but, but, but again, I see this in healthcare now where you don't think normally they would go fast. Now they're just reinventing okay. uh, the analyze things. So, so I think everybody is sort of moving. Uh, it is not industry specific. It's more like a, maybe management specific. Are you a risk taker? You have to be a risk taker now and right. you have to right. uh, reimagine the world a bit. Yeah, I, you know, when we think about the, the sort of last few decades of, of technology in general, a lot of big industries, particularly hospital, healthcare, et cetera, have always considered change to be risk. But I think now it's one of those things where the risk is not to change. Um, right. And, and I, I was thinking about that famous line that from chaos comes order. So that's, right. that's probably going to be the case as well. We, sometimes we just need to shake things up and, yeah. and then let, let the dust There settle. is at least the first step to change is creating a burning platform. Yep. Right. Yep. So like we, we, have, we have a burning platform yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, if you're on a burning platform, you start finding solutions. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if you can maybe walk us through, you know, thinking about some of those uh, industries and organizations you're outlining there, particularly healthcare, et cetera, and some of the government agencies um, who are succeeding in the adoption or, or necessarily are having to, Walk us through some of the ways that Click is currently helping them to, to drive those successful outcomes and what types, yeah. which part of the Click portfolio is, is you know, helping them in that space? Well, the, the interesting part is the entire portfolio is designed to do that. So this is what's interesting right now. Click lives in a fun, great moment with this end-to-end. -end. I say I talked a bit about uh, this, this need of getting the data ready, yeah. the AI trust score, which Drew talks about, being able to trust your data, so that uh, you can, with confidence, give uh, data to the business and the business knows that what they're seeing out of AI is reality. Yep. So I think this is crucial. But obviously having the new tools on the other side, I think uh, barriers of adoption, we talked about the, the, the resistance of change. I think the other thing, we used to talk a lot about data literacy. Yep. It's still a huge problem. Okay. But now we have an AI literacy. Right. Uh, I, I, have a, I have 20 years old at home. The way what they can get out of chat GPT is very impressive to me. Yeah. I, I can't. So there <laughs> is kind of an, this generation born with it that knows how to do things better. And I think in, uh, in, at work it's going to be the same. I think those who will master this AI literacy with the people, making sure people understand and know what, what the art of the possible is. So what we do with Click is uh, obviously we, we try to uh, 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 work with customers, help them journey step by step. We talked about small projects, start yep. small, get your data ready. So we're trying to be a bit more prescriptive about how to go about it step by step for those who want to. Uh, we try to have starter kits uh, or, or services. Yep. We say like go from A to B faster, pre-configured. I talked about creating my own AI team. So my AI team creates IP about how we do it, okay. pre-configured, and we're going to give it out. We're going to give it out to customers says, here's how I did it reconfigure it to your need. We done some of the thinking and some of the work uh, so that uh, at least for IT, since I run IT, I'm trying, I'm trying to develop new, new, new utilities and tools done with AI that she can uh, maybe inspire people saying, oh, I can use some of that. Yeah. And then uh, when you start getting your, your, your feet in, then you, you can expand. So again, offerings, uh, learning from also what we see with our customers, and making sure that we connect people who have great ideas and answers with people who don't know with similar needs. So we also broker of information of some sense. So I use AI today uh, to uh, gather all these inputs from all the customers I talk to every day and then make it searchable for everybody else to find out what are the others doing without uh, breaking any privacy law. But I can say, if 
financial companies solve this problem by doing X. Are you interested? Fantastic. And they can find that on their own. Uh, I, I was laughing on the inside about your uh, anecdote about your 20 year old uh, knowing how to use some of the tools, whatever. It reminded me when my parents had to be helped using the TV yeah. remote yeah. control because yeah. they were used to pushing the yeah. buttons. The, 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 the piece that is not very funny for people like you and I is we used to find that funny, now or less. Yeah. yeah, it's true. <laughs> I wonder if you could wrap me up with one last quick question. Uh, when I think about everything you just shared now, one of the things I'd love for our audience to sort of take away from this is the type of unique guidance that Click is offering customers, particularly. Uh, from your part of the organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the key steps to sort of get ready for AI, prepare for AI, and then the types of implementations to look for. If you would offer some guidance to our audience overall who, who are probably being pushed to adopt AI yeah, or, being, yeah. or AI yeah. is happening to them, yeah. if you could just briefly wrap us up in a minute or two with regard to sort of what kind of guidance are you offering to other customers currently and what could you share with our audience as yeah, to yeah. how to approach it, what sort of things to think about, what sort of things can they action immediately before they come and have a conversation with you and yeah. your team at Click to then look at the next natural steps. Yeah, well, so the way I do it really is I try to find, uh, uh, advise people to find a use case, find an example of something that will create buzz in the company. You have to create a success story that people want to be part of, that people want to replicate. So whatever it's like appealing to your CFO because you're going to save money and do the same thing much better, much faster, whatever you're going to get higher employee engagement or satisfaction because some of the work they don't like to do is now being automated, yep. or whatever is kind of like a creating new business models or enabling to, to, to capture an opportunity, be very clear, start with the end in mind. Start with like your headline, I like to speak. When I'm done, this is what I would have achieved. Don't start with like bottoms up, saying like, let's see what the tool can do and see where you land. Really, I love that. Uh, start That's with right. the end in mind. Uh, I like to have sprints that are more than a, two to three weeks long because I lose, I, I lose yep, interest yep. otherwise. So that's sort of like where I would start. And then obviously when you start having successes, then the funding will come. Perfect. The, 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 the mind share in the company will come and then you can go bigger and better. Sounds great. And it reminds me of uh, the lady Nana, I forget her last name, from uh, Royal Mail, who said that in all of this, you have to take the business with you. Yeah. Otherwise, we won't succeed. Well, Roberto, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you again. Always a pleasure to have you back on the show uh, and your great insights. And I know our audience will, will be able to gain a lot from your guidance as to where to start from there. Until I see you next, safe travels. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll Same look to you. having you back on the show again soon. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much. Cheers.